Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here this morning to the Montana Baptist Church. It's the first Sunday in March. One of the things that are up and coming for next week is you need to turn your clock ahead. So that's a good thing. So don't forget to do that. And, or if you do, you'll show up a little bit afterward. Things are happening. <laughs> But that's okay. We'll take you anyway. <laughs> so, with that, uh, spring ahead, fall back. Uh, next week we have a, uh, a singer that's coming in, Seth Boyd. He will be doing a, a brief uh, presentation of the, of the gospel music that he uh, does for the Lord. And uh, I encourage that uh, you would come and support uh, set as in his ministry. Also, next week we'll be putting in the little envelopes for love get a love offering for Seth. So uh, he's probably going to do about uh, fifteen or seventeen or eighteen minutes worth of stuff, and then uh, we'll again we'll continue on with uh, an abbreviated message. I see a couple of heads going yay. <laughs> so. But whatever the Lord has in store for us next week, let's get to, through today. Also, uh, one encouraging note on Operation Christmas Child, we found out that locally, out of the central gathering area in Sunbury, Operation Christmas Child sent out over 20,000 boxes. Man, praise God. 20,000 children around the world from our local area received God's word and a blessing from all of us. Praise God. Also, uh, coming up on Monday, March the 14th, will be a leadership meeting as we address some of the, the items that are up and coming for the new year. And Operation Christmas Child boxes, as we just mentioned, are still over there. Are over there. And uh, they can be filled up accordingly throughout the year. So, any questions about that? The instructions are on there for a boy or a girl and what to put in them. Uh, okay. We still have gift cards, wise gift cards. And let's not forget Resurrection Morning, which is coming up next month. And we praise God for that time of joyful celebration. Any other announcements? If not, uh, Anna has a dedication of the love gift boxes. This is very appropriate because I was just handed another love gift box this morning. If you've forgotten your love gift boxes, it's okay to turn them in late. We accept them any time of the year because God's work continues on through our giving of love gifts. Uh, just this week I received a little refund check in the mail. So I said, I did without this before. I can do without this again. So I stuck it in my love gift box. I thought, that's that much more. For God multiplies our monies like he did the loaves and the fishes for the crowds of people. So let us bow our heads in prayer now. Dear Lord, we thank you for the giving this year. It's down a bit from last year, but that's okay. We know that you have the ability to multiply everything that we give. And those gifts that we give uh, with love to help others less fortunate, whatever the need may be, we know that doing your work, Lord, and we just pray that they receive the blessing from you that we intend <coughs> for the love that we are sharing. We ask this in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 All right. Any other announcements? If not, uh, let us uh, begin.
begin our worship service to the Lord this morning by standing and reading responsibly number two. We worship your majesty. And that's why we're here. We are here to worship the Lord. Yours, O Lord, is the greatest and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, O oh our God, we give you thanks and, and praise your glorious name. Join us now as we sing number one. Majesty.
what you have for us as we continue through this world. Be with us now. Push me aside. And may your words ring true. And may there be a blessing come out for someone who is with us this morning or even those who are watching via the media. Be with us now, I pray. Amen. This morning, as we look at those three, four passages in the scripture that we've already mentioned, if you remember from two weeks ago, oh, by the way, wasn't last week a blessing? Totally. Totally a heart-stopping, Jesus-loving time yes, last week. Whew, that was great. You know, I hope you received a blessing, because I, I certainly did. And I know that those that were here, the kids that were here, and the adults, regardless of their age. Uh, there, was, there was blessings there. Wow. So, but before that, we were ending the book of the Malachi, when we ended the Old Testament. Now, we're starting into the New. Now, that time period between the Old Testament and the New Testament is sometimes called the silent years. It goes for almost 400 years. Silent meaning God didn't take a vacation or he went on hiatus or, or sabbatical or anything like that. It meant that God was not moving and doing like he had in the past. He was the miracle of the sun rising and the sun set. Happened every day for, oh, for 400 years. So to say that God was not doing anything would be totally incorrect. God does things within our lives that sometimes we don't give a blessing to or an acknowledgement thereof. But as far as the miraculous moving and the miracles, the signs and the wonders that would be addressed to mankind to give God glory was absent or silent. And if you remember when the book of Malachi closed out, the announcer was like an announcer saying, the next voice you hear will be that of John the Baptist, making the announcement, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the entire world. You see, Matthew and Luke give the early introduction of the birth of Christ and introduces us to the Christ child, where Mark and John introduces Jesus at his baptism, at the beginning of his public ministry. And that's where we're going to start. Two of the, uh, two of the, the passages of Scripture have to do with Jesus and his baptism. And the other two have to do with uh, what Mark and John, and we'll get to them hopefully. If not, I'll have an abbreviated message next week. So, we're going to start in Luke. That's where we're going to go first. But to set the background for what's taking place, I'm going to read to you this morning uh, Matthew chapter 3, uh, the first couple of verses before we get to 16. And it, it sets, the stage. It sets the, the stage for what's happening. And this is what's taking place. We'll be looking at Matthew 3. 13 through 15. Then came Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized of you, and you come to me. And Jesus answering him said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, in other words, permit it to be, for Thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Now that's verse 15. And, I, and that, as I was preparing for this message, because I, I, it's always good to read ahead and what happens next or wherever you're at. And when I read it, where Jesus said to John the Baptist, says, it becomes us. Us. That word just went... And I hope this happens to you when you're reading God's word. You know, it just, it was looked like that two word, that two letter word, the S and the U just got so big. Let us 
to fulfill all righteousness. John had recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. And he humbly said, you know, he was, as he said, Lord, I need to be baptized by you, not the other way around. And Jesus says, permit it so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. In other words, Jesus could have baptized himself. But yet, he, 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 John humbly allowed himself to baptize the Savior. You know, giving it, giving it the, the association of Jesus and Jesus the man being baptized by another man in likeness. Of course, you know that when an individual is baptized, it's symbolic of Christ, his burial. Water baptism is symbolic of, a, of a, an outward expression of something that has taken place in the heart. That there's been a heart change. And what it symbolically reflects is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. You see, to, to be able to symbolically said Jesus said I'm going to die I'm going to be buried I'm going to resurrect and I'm going to live forever and because he lives we live because he I feel a song coming on because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone. Why? Because I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Praise God. Woo! That little word, us, just brings out so much. So now we move down to Luke. Luke chapter 3 and 16. It sets the stage for what was for what was happening there. Jesus was coming on the stage. Luke 3 15 says that, that when John was baptizing these individuals who had came there, they were wondering about John. They were looking and they had you know questions. Well, you know, is this really? Is this is this the Messiah? John 3 and 15 says, now the people were were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not. You see, they, these folks, were, they were looking for, for the coming of the Messiah, but yet they still had that, that ability to, well, is this guy John, you know, with his habits, eating habits, his dietary and his clothes, is he, is he the Messiah? But yet, John was proclaiming, make, he will make the, the mountains come flat and, the, and, the, and uh, the pathways come easy. John was proclaiming the forerunner, the announcement of Jesus Christ. John is saying to them that you should know better. You know, and had they known what was in Scripture, had they been paying attention to what was in Scripture, they would have recognized and realized that, that John the Baptist was not the coming of the Messiah, was not the Messiah. John answers them and says, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to lose it. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And he goes on to use a, a parable, an agricultural parable. This is his winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge or clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn with the chaff. He will burn with an unquenchable fire. You see, with Jesus, you're either wheat that gets gathered in or you're chaff that goes into the burning of 
unquenchable fire. Mm. That portion there where he said, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That was fulfilled in, in Acts chapter 2, verses 3, 2 through 4. This is, John is here prophesying something that's going to happen three and a half years into the future. Three and a half years before that event takes place. Acts goes like this, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a sound of a mighty rushing, mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That event took place on the day of Pentecost. You know, there's folks out there that say, well, you know, I, I just don't believe that. You know, that event, you know, I just, I, I just can't grasp that. You know, one would have to ask, you know, if something in the scripture doesn't fit your personal narrative, what else is in scripture that doesn't fit your personal narrative? We see a lot of that around, you know, how about the passage of scripture in Exodus that says, Thou shalt not murder? Uh, I sure hope in this nation that we eliminate that plague called abortion. Mm. Mm. But I'm not going to get off on that. That was, that was a different subject. John here is baptizing. And he waits. John, Luke says that there were many, there were many with expectations, waiting to know what was in their hearts and to be baptized by John. Luke 3 and 21 says that when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens opened up. You see, Jesus waited till last to be baptized. He said, the scripture says, when all the people were baptized. In other words, Jesus waited. He did not want to distract from their commitment to following God. Which brings to mind the scripture that says, the last shall be first. And the first shall be last. And then John begins baptizing Jesus. Takes us right back to Matthew now. Jesus walks into the water. John is about due to baptize him by immersion. John goes through the procedure of baptizing John or baptizing Jesus. Verse 3, 16 and 17 says, And when he baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens opened, opened to him. And John, he saw, John saw a Spirit of God descending like a dove, lightning on him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Wow. Jesus came up out of that water praying. And when he came up out of that water, Heaven opened up. And a dove, like John saw what he thought was a dove coming down and lighted on Jesus. You know, if Jesus needed, if Jesus the man needed the Holy Spirit to do the mighty works of God, 
Don't you think we need oh, yeah. the Holy Spirit to be able to be doing the, the work of God? We should be following the Spirit's direction. Here we see for the first time the triune God, the Trinity. We see Jesus in the water, coming up out of the water. We see the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And we see God the Father saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God the Father giving affirmation to his Son, Jesus. And how important is that as parents and as grandparents that we need to affirm our children as they're growing up so that they know that we love them, that we are pleased with them, and sometimes we are not pleased with them. Or be it from the, well, they know that I love them because I give them housing, I give them food, I give them, you know, you need to tell them that you love them. God the Father said, Son, I am very pleased with you. This is the first time that we see all three portions of the Trinity in one location. And it happens again. Anybody know where that's at, class? Genesis. What's that? Genesis. At the Mount of Transfiguration. We see Jesus. We see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in Jesus. And we say, this is my son. Whatever he says, do. Now, as it comes springtime of the year, there's individuals that will be out walking the streets and knocking on doors. And if, if it's a one particular strife, they'll ask you, you know, to go in your Bible and find. So I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, I believe in the Trinity. They'll just look at you and say, where's that in your Bible? Well, then you'll turn to... Go to the back of the book, it's Trinity, you know, you go to John, I think it's 1 John 1 and 4 or something like that. Don't hold me to that. Somebody can fact check me. But hey, there it does say Trinity. But then, you know, then they'll say, well, what's it say alongside of it? Isn't there a little star? Or look here, and this, you know, this is MSS, you know, omitted from some manuscripts. Oh, so it's not in the Word of God in every book. Of course, that opens the door to doubt. Which, but either way, just be aware of that. So, here we see that Jesus come up out of the water praying. The God the Father, God the, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were present in all locations. And heaven opened up. Wow. The same heaven that opened up when Stephen in Acts chapter 7. Stephen was about due to get stoned for telling the truth, you know, by them righteous religious leaders. He was telling them the truth about Jesus and the fulfillment of the prophecies. And they're standing there with stones. And those that were standing there with stones in their hands, when they heard Stephen speaking the truth, they plugged their ears and were didn't want to hear That's in Acts chapter 7. But Stephen, as they're beginning to pull their hands back to throw them stones, and, and the apostle Saul was there. Saul before he became Paul. Stephen says, Behold, I see heavens open. I see the glory of God and Jesus at the right hand of God. How many of us have heard of individuals who are nearing the, the end of their life as they are there reflecting on what's happening? They may have been incoherent for all those, all those years or all that time, but all of a sudden they say, I see someone coming. I see white individuals dressed in white. Like that woman. In the middle, I know him. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. And that's what Stephen saw. 
gives us a lot of hope, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So here we see the baptism of Jesus in both Luke and also in Matthew. Then if we move over to 3 and 16 in the book of Mark. Here we see that Mark introduces Jesus here at his baptism and also the beginning of his early ministry. Jesus has taken a group of individuals up on the mountain and here's where Jesus selects his 12 disciples. And what we're reading here is a portion of that in 3 and 16, 17. Simon, who he gave the name Peter, or stone, that that means. You know, there's folks running around that say that uh, uh, Peter is the, the rock of the church. Well, no, that that is disproved over in 1 Corinthians, where it says there is no other foundation except to be built on Christ Jesus. So we see here that Jesus is appointing or selecting. Some scripture says that they were ordaining the 12 disciples to be with Jesus, to go out, be able to go out and to, to preach the word, to teach the word, to be able to heal the sick and cast out demons. There are powers available to us. Preach the word. This is just not for one individual. Preach the word. Heal the sick. Pray for the sick. Cast out demons if necessary. That power is available to you and I. But we seem to want to shackle it. Here Jesus is picking out his 12 disciples out of the group that was there. Of course we have Peter, James. You know there's four different James in the Bible. Two of them were his disciples. Peter, James, and then John. James and John, they, they were brothers. Jesus had a name for them. Boganes. Boganes, which means sons of Dunaba. Sons of thunder. How many of us have heard the word Dunaba? Our, our plain folk community, they say that. Whenever there's thunder weather, do that. It's thunder. I have a 1850 German Bible at home. And it's, I like to look to see what the words say in English and versus that. And it is, do not. So, with that, we see. Jesus choosing his disciples, there's 12 of them. 12 was God's number of government. We see here that that are listed in 16 and 17. The, uh, the, we have Peter, we have John, we have James. We have James who gave his, you know, what about the rest of them? How many of us can name for all 12 disciples. Along with these three that are listed here, we see Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, Thaddeus, excuse me. We have Matthew, Thomas. Thomas gets a bad name, but you know, I think he graduated out of that. And then we see James, Atheus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. You notice we can, we can tell that the scripture was written after the death, resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And many, a few years later, because, and whenever you see Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus, the one who betrayed him. Fascinating note that I found during the studies. Judas was the only disciple from the tribe of Judah other than Jesus. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So we see all these individuals being gathered together 
to be able to proclaim God's word and work hand in hand during the life of Christ and then after the life of Christ as a shining witness, a glowing testimony of God and his son Jesus Christ. Which brings us to the last John 3, 16 and 17. Most of us can, can quote it by heart. But are we? Are we that witness that if God has called us to be? Proclaiming it, yes, we can tell someone. For God so loved the world. Now that doesn't mean the planet, the terra firma. Now God created it. And each and every part of it he liked because he developed it, he made it. But the world there is not the terra firma, it's people. God the Father didn't send Jesus to save the little animals and the, the plants and all those things. He came to send his son for mankind. You and I who are made in the image of Christ. For those individuals whom we don't like, who hate us, they are made in the image of Christ. For God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever. You see, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. That whosoever is all-encompassing to the entire populace of the world. But the next point is the caveat that gets people so bent out of shape. Whosoever believes in him has faith in Jesus, accepts Jesus by faith as Savior. Romans 3 and 10, 13, you know, 10 and 13 puts it this way. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ooh, I was pounding on the floor. I'm sorry. But should not perish to live but have everlasting life. To live. God doesn't want anyone to perish. It tells us that in 2 Peter 3 and 9. God doesn't want to see anyone perish. But the choice is the individual. And it's behooved to us that we proclaim the love of Jesus Christ to the entire world. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, condemn the world. God didn't send Jesus down here to pass judgment on the world yet. But not while he was here. That the world, I put in the word people, that the people through him might be saved. Amen. Jesus isn't here in the physical form, but the body of Christ is here in the physical form. You and I are parts of that body. Mm. And we are to proclaim John 3, 16 and 17. Say it with me as we read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And as long as we're on this earth, as long as we're drawing breath, 
It's a gift from God. And if we've accepted Christ as our Savior, we have that responsibility to share that same gift with whomever we come in contact with. Amen. Because God loved you and I. We didn't have to get cleaned up to come to Christ. How many of us, well, I'm going to quit all my bad habits, you know, and then, and then I'll accept the Lord. There's an old song that we sing that says, Just as I am, mm -hmm. I come to thee. God takes us and meets us where we're at, even in the most dirtiest, down, lowest point in our life. He's there. What a blessing the gospel brings us in these four chapters Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm looking forward to as we go forward. Are you? Yeah. This is great. This has been one fantastic study so far. Praise God. All right, join us now in our closing hymn. Uh, next week we'll be looking at the book of Acts and in, maybe into Romans. So join us now as we sing. It was love that lifted Jesus to the cross. Love lifted me. Number 642.
of our life with Christ. We should know it. We should be able to stow it in our hearts. 316, John, know it, stow it, show it, and then sow it. John 316. Wow. What a mighty God we serve. Heavenly Father, we thank you to be in your presence this morning. Lord, we just ask that our worship here this morning was a sweet smell aroma in your nose and in your nostrils. Lord, we thank you for having an audience with each and every one of us. Be with us now till we gather together again next Lord's Day. Or maybe, Lord, you'll, you'll call us home to be with you or meet you in the air. Either way, we're going to love you, we're going to praise you, and we're going to give you glory. Send us out to the mission fields beyond these four walls. Inspire us and make us bolder for your cause and your son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.